Hey guys, thanks again very much for coming out to our channel. We really appreciate it. So today we're going to be talking about the multi-lug rotating bolt and its usage in the common and modern era. So the multi-lug rotating bolt, well, we can go back to the early 1800s with various early bolt action rifles, but for this particular episode, we're going to be focusing on modern day semi-automatic rifles and light machine guns. So the multi-lug rotating bolt offers a number of advantages. You know, if one lug shears off, you only lose a little bit of the barren surface. Only a rotary force can disengage the lugs. In addition to it, reduces the angle at which it is required to rotate the entire bolt. If you have a bolt action rifle, you're going to have to rotate it about 90 degrees to get a lot of the bolt actions uh, bolt out of the rifle, out of the receiver. But with a multi lug bolt, such as an AR or something, it's a lot easier to twist it a certain way through the use of gas pressure. So the bolts we're going to be looking at today are from a number of historic rifles, beginning with the AR-10, where our story begins with a certain George Sullivan and Eugene Stoner. Of course, if you're familiar with the AR-15, you probably already know about the AR-10, and that is a 762 by 51 millimeter NATO rifle developed in the late 1950s, and it used a seven lug rotating bolt that had a smaller bolt head within a bolt carrier and this was operated off of a gas system that ported gas from the barrel to the upper receiver. Of course many of you are probably familiar with AR-15 so I'm not going to beat a dead horse here but let's just take it a second and look back and realize what we're looking at here which is a Sudanese contract AR-10 from the late 1950s. This was also sold to a number of other countries. Canada was one of them, Burma, also Portugal. Portugal especially used them a lot in Africa. But what we're looking at here is the earliest version of one of the most popular weapon systems in the entire world, apart from the Kalashnikov rifle. And it uses a multi-lug rotating bolt head and it uses it very efficiently and very well, provided it is kept clean. Next up, we have the M1941 Johnson rifle. And if you're interested, you can watch several TFB TV episodes on this that we recorded earlier in our formative years. So the Johnson rifle was created by one Melvin Johnson to compete with Emma Grant in World War II. It has an eight lug bolt. And unlike the AR-15, it doesn't have a bolt, singular bolt head. The entire bolt is together in two pieces and it is a roller lock-in system. Now, Johnson is often cited as one of the people who Eugene Stoner and George Sullivan sort of looked to when creating their own uh, bolt system with the AR-10 and later on the AR-15. However, we're going to go into a little bit of history here in a second and find out where did Johnson get the idea for the bolt from. So in a side note on that, Johnson actually worked personally with Eugene Stoner and uh, George Sullivan during the late 1950s and early 1960s on promoting the AR-10 to various elements within the Department of Defense, although this was apparently very unsuccessful. But his rifle is still here today, and it is a classic example of one of the early foundations of the AR-10 AR-15 bolt. Unfortunately, being a short recoil operated system, this did not lend itself very well to working with a bayonet and had a lot of accuracy issues during the war and was one of the reasons why the rifle was actually turned down in favor of the M1 Grand. Next up is the Lewis Assault Phase Rifle. I just wanted to try to throw this in there to show a sort of modern day equivalent of early 20th century's technology in that this came out in the 1916-1917 era and we had our previous TFB TV episode on the Lewis Assault Phase Rifle. But it uses a four lug bolt and but it is a open bolt system as opposed to gas operated. And finally, we have arrived at the Fosbury Slide Action model of 1891. So Fosbury was a British officer who invented a number of interesting pieces. He worked on the Webley Fosbury automatic revolver. He worked on the Paradox rifle slash shotgun. It was sort of a shotgun with a rifled portion of the barrel two inches from the muzzle that did become somewhat popular in the late 1800s. However, one of his most least known 
inventions was what you're looking at right now which back then they wouldn't have called this a pump action shotgun it's called it was called a slide action shotgun so although he was british himself slide action shotguns weren't really intended for the british market not being with over and unders and side by sides being much more popular than in the american market and that's where we probably think that he invented this shotgun for so this is chambered in, this is a 16 gauge shotgun. It's a detachable magazine fed, which is very interesting for the time. And as you can tell, if you look at the trigger guard, there's a space just ahead of the trigger where you can actually insert a detachable magazine. And that's where we're pretty sure the magazine would have gone. However, we don't have a surviving copy to this day. Anyways, this is patent number 11,339 and was filed for in 1891 and the patent number that he describes is looking at this exact shotgun here. But the most interesting portion of this bolt that we want to look at is the fact that the bolt on this Fosbury shotgun from the 1800s very closely resembles that of an AR-10 even down to the extractor, the ejector position, and almost the same amount of lugs, and that this was a six-lugged bolt. In addition, it had a removable bolt head, which although not easily removable like the AR-10 or AR-15 do in field strip, it was very removable compared to a number of others, and it did move in to lock the action into the chamber and into the barrel. So not only was the bolt head and the method of locking very forward thinking, but also the op rod as we kind of see it on the M1 Grand. And as we look at on here, it is very similar on the left side of the rifle in that the method of operation, it uses that rod connected to the pump action connected to the bolt. Now the bolt itself is actually extremely rudimentary in function the rear portion of it is this simple little tit that literally keeps the firing pin from in closing forward and the problem with that is that it can be very unsecure if you just knock it with your hands you can actually pop it open and you can actually send the firing pin forward accidentally one of the reasons why this design probably wasn't very favored in the civilian markets of the time Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I really appreciate the viewership. We'd like to really thank one of our sponsors of Interior Munitions. They really help out with the channel and provide some of the stuff that you see on here. We'd also really like to thank the Royal Armouries, this being the last episode that we'll have shot at the Royal Armouries. Until next time.